beaming proudly, hockey sticks crossed, twelve fresh-faced schoolgirls pose in a time-honored tradition. But look again. Standing in the center of the back row is one Catherine Middleton, the sporty but shy member of Marlborough's hockey A team and now our future queen. More remarkable still is that, although more than twenty years have passed since this picture was taken, Kate is as close as ever to the friends she made at school. And as it was revealed this week that the Duchess of Cambridge is considering sending her son Prince George to her old school, rather than attending Eton like his father Prince William and uncle Prince Harry, perhaps we need look no further than this picture to deduce the reason why. For it was Marlborough College which turned the reserved teenager into the self-confident, sporty young woman who caught the eye of a prince. And it seems that she feels that her son, who is only five, may be better served by a more nurturing and less alpha atmosphere. Kate herself knows how it feels not to fit in at a leading public school. She joined Marlborough midway through the academic year in 1996 after teasing by other girls at Down House, an all-girls boarding school closer to home in Berkshire, led parents Carol and Michael to switch schools. Headmaster Edward Gould knew Kate had left Down House after an unhappy time there. Pupil Gemma Williamson said, Apparently she had been bullied very badly and she certainly looked thin and pale. She had very little confidence. Kate's house tutor Joan Gall said she was suffering from eczema due to stress. When she arrived she was very quiet. Coming into a big school like Marlborough was difficult, but she settled in quickly. Miss Gall added, it was like a big, happy family. We would do things like bake cakes and watch videos. How semistress Ann Patching said of Kate's past experience, she didn't make a big deal about it. I can't remember if it was her or Carol who mentioned Down House. It was a concern. But they were determined to move on. Mrs. Patching added that her new pupil loved lasagna and pasta bakes but that Kate always stayed very slim. After prep, Kate would listen to her Sony Walkman or watch TV. Sitcom Friends was a big favorite and at their house shout at the end of term she sang the theme with classmates. She was popular and formed close friendships with her hockey pals. Dorm mates were rotated every term to stop cliques from forming. In the evening Kate and her friends would hang out in the common room and she would make her favorite snack, microwaved Marmite sandwiches. Mrs. Patching added, Catherine was able to settle in very easily. She got involved in school life and loved sport and music. Catherine Solari, who was in her biology set, said, Catherine was always really sweet and lovely. She treated everybody alike. She was a good girl and quite preppy, she always did the right thing, and she was very sporty. I wouldn't say she was the brightest button, but she was very hard-working. Kate became joint captain of the tennis team with her friend Alice St. John Webster, and also shown in swimming high jump, netball and hockey. Her parents visited regularly and watched her play sport. Younger sister Pippa joined later on an all-rounder scholarship. Mrs. Patching said, Pippa was good at everything and sharper academically, but I don't think Catherine ever resented that. After her GCSEs, Kate went on a school hockey trip to Argentina, then to the Caribbean with her family. School friend Jim said, Kate came back after the long summer break in absolute beauty. Every boy in the school fancied her rotten. Denise Alford agreed, Pippa was a tomboy but Kate had lost her braces and looked stunning. She was wearing makeup and looked amazing. She was apparently top of the fit list which boys would sometimes pin on the walls. Kate's confidence grew. Her first kiss seems to have been with Woody, the elder brother of Alice St. John Webster. She then developed a crush on Willem Marx, a boarder, but no real romance ensued. One friend said Kate was saving herself for someone special, unlike many other sixth formers who were in relationships. She reportedly had a romance with Harry Blakelock, captain of the rugby team and also very good at hockey. The affair fizzled out when he left school and took a gap year, leaving Kate heartbroken. Prince William came to Marlborough for inter-school events, and may have bumped into Kate in the dining room, but she was not one of the girls who would gather to gawp at him. She denied reports which suggested she had his picture pinned to her dorm wall, but school friend Jessica Hay said she did have a crush on him. 
We would sit around talking about all the boys at school we fancied but Catherine would always say, I don't like any of them. They're all a bit of rough. Then she would joke, there's no one quite like William. She always said, I bet he's really kind. You can tell by just looking at him. In the sixth form, Kate was a prefect and head of house. Unlike some pupils, she didn't get involved in illicit boozing. Pal Gemma said, Catherine wasn't much of a party animal. A group of us used to sneak off to reading to go drinking but she would never join us. Kate was known for working very hard and took A levels in chemistry, biology and art in 2000, achieving two as in a B. By the time she left she was acknowledged as one of the great beauties of her year and, more importantly, very popular. In the school year book she was voted, person most likely to be loved by everybody. And the friends she made there have been her mainstay and support in her royal life. They are the godmothers to her children, and, even now, these old hockey pals are the trusted confidants to whom she turns in a crisis. No wonder that she would like the same for George and Charlotte and Louis in due course.